You know, the one disadvantage of being super obsessed with something I wanted to talk about for hours is that it's going to take me forever to edit this audio. Hi people, how are you all? I am quite frankly bloody fantastic, uh, thanks for asking. Partly because my uni project is just going really well at the minute, we had some nice weather here last week or so, but mainly because I finally got round to watching Our Flag Means Death. And when I say that this show is good, I mean it is good. So good in fact that I paused in the middle of doing my Kakashi and Guy speed paint, which is up until this point one of my favourite ships ever, and the painting was going so well too, but I paused it to draw these two instead because I literally could not resist the urge to talk about this show and just kind of had to get it all out of my system. In fact, I would like to apologise in advance for when this video inevitably gets wildly off track because that is absolutely going to happen and this is definitely going to be an excited ramble rather than an in-depth analysis of any kind. I'm sure I could do a breakdown of how amazing every single bit of this show is, but for now we're just going to stick with ramble about how bloody brilliant this is. So, for context, I've recently been in kind of a bit of a TV show slump, there's not really been anything on that I particularly wanted to watch, and I've been feeling kind of bitter knowing that I did enjoy watching The Witcher, and I love the character of Yaskia, which, I mean, you've seen by last speed paint, great guy, but I was really just very heavily queerbaited, and there is so much queerbaiting in that show when the characters are clearly never going to get together, and it's, it just makes me feel kind of terrible about the whole thing, to be perfectly honest. So much so that when fan art from this show started showing up on my dash on Instagram, I just sort of ignored it. Bear in mind that at this point I'd never even heard of this show at all, so I had no idea. So often I wind up watching something because I've seen cute fan art and then I finally view it and I find that it's either wishful thinking from the artist or the show has been queerbaiting people or very rarely the characters do get together but they're like background characters or it's just such a minor little tiny part of the show that I end up watching like three seasons or something for about 20 minutes of the couples actually being cute together and I was just so fed up with this happening. But, you know, Steve Ned kept showing up all over the place and everyone seemed really excited about it and I was like you know what fine 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 I've seen like five posts just from people I follow in the last day and a half and I like pirates as much as the next guy in fact I love pirates Taika Waititi generally makes pretty decent stuff I've liked a lot of the films he's done so let's just give this a little bit of a google shall we so I did and I read the little synopsis and figured you know rich guy with no skills fails at being a pirate sounds like a pretty decent premise for a show and so, you know, scrolled down a little bit more and I came across an article titled something along the lines of surprise romance with mentions of there actually being an on-screen kiss. And I was like, so this is at least slightly legit. Like there are clearly some LGBT rap in this show, at least a little bit. So I decided to watch it. It was only one season after all. It would be fine even if I wasted my time. Now by the end of the first episode, I was absolutely and completely hooked. Like, romance plots aside, this is just a really good comedy. Pirates is possibly one of my favourite kind of settings after high fantasy with dragons. You know, you gotta love some good squashbuckling and, I mean, everybody, pretty much everybody looks good in tall boots and leather jackets and eyeliner. And I really liked the way that it was balanced between, like, mostly comedy and, like, honestly, the entire show is not crack. <laughs> um, but with the occasional, like, really serious note and a bit of backstory and the supporting cast were super awesome and obviously very quickly I recognised Steed as being the same guy who kept showing up in all the fan art. So even if the romance was going to be a super minor part, it was still a pirate show with a queer main character. And I maybe I've not watched a lot of pirate media but I've not come across any that actually have queer characters in, which is stupid when you think about it because pirates were well known for being very gay. So I kept watching and I accidentally binged through the first five episodes in one evening and honestly would have kept going if I didn't have to get up for uni the next morning. This was Monday night. Uh, it's taken me less than a week to watch this show twice and make the speed paint and record this audio. But yeah, kept watching it. Absolutely fell in love with Steed as a character. The guy is an absolute legend. He's great. Probably one of my favourite characters of all time. And uh, then there's Blackbeard, who honestly is the kind of character that I wish Geralt had been and wish a couple of other characters I've come across had been, in that he's such an intriguing mix of serious and could totally kill you, but he's actually also an idiotic, sappy lunatic who isn't afraid. I say isn't afraid, but 
doesn't have the same complex that lots of the other characters have about squashing down all their feelings and pretending he hates Steed. He makes it very clear that he does like Steed, even if he, you know, lies to Izzy a couple times and says, oh yeah, I'm totally gonna kill this guy. You don't believe it as the audience that he hates Steed. One of the reasons that I was actually so willing to put my Kakashi and Guy speed paint aside to talk about this is because these two have the exact kind of scary could kill you guy and sunshine guy idiots to lovers vibe that I latch onto basically all the time that I latched onto with Kakashi and Guy except instead of it being super queer baity or one-sided or in the case of Kakashi and Guy probably wasn't actually even written with the intention of hinting a romantic relationship I just took it way out of context this is real like actually real intentional chemistry not only that, but we have a pair of queer main characters and they're actually adults for a change. I'm not saying I don't love a good teen romance. A good sappy teen romance is completely fine. But it's so refreshing to have a queer story about adult, I was about to say well-adjusted adults. They're not at all well-adjusted, but you know, without all of the hormones and school drama and who likes who kind of nonsense going on, it's nice to see characters who are actually grown-ups for once, if that makes sense. And particularly, I like that it's not set in the modern day. 99% of all of the queer romance I've ever seen is set in the modern day in the 21st century. Which is, you know, partly because historically, you, just people were very homophobic and you know, prejudiced against uh, queer people. But it's just really nice to see it set in a different time for change. In a world where I'm fairly confident they're not just going to murder off all of the gay ones at the end. You know? So like I said, I only made it to episode 5 before I had to stop and sleep and go to uni, but I wound up doing many, many, many doodles during my day at uni the next day, as well as having a little nosy around Instagram looking at fan art, occasionally giving myself some spoilers, and eventually came across uh, one post from Taiko Titi's actual page, uh, which I believe is a quote from Vilbit on Instagram, although it's not entirely clear, uh, which basically says, the creators aren't scared of not fitting the mainstream, they don't try to sell this as something that it isn't or paint pictures that end up not existing. No dirty tricks or lies or holding back truths to get more views. And I'm repeating it here because I literally don't know how to put it better than that, even though I am trying for like, you know, 15 minutes here to say it better than that, but I don't know how better to describe it than that. So often things are hinted at that never get fulfilled or get hardly any screen time or the creators try and kind of hide them away in the background or they only get included after seasons and seasons of fans complaining and protesting that really these characters should be together because you genuinely keep keeping them single so that you can hint that they might be together and then they never do but this is genuinely just a brilliant rom-com that happens to be gay and isn't trying to copy or follow the formula of straight rom-coms or anything like that it has actual chemistry and character growth and relationship development rather than just kind of like weirdly jumping to the characters being together because you know oh well we you know put queer characters in they don't have to actually seem to like each other until we decide they're together and i just have so many words and none at all because this is there should be more of this with so many shows, Good Omens is probably a good example here, and for the record, I do still love that show. Uh, it's got some really good gender representation in it. But with so many shows, I find myself justifying that it's good by asking myself the question, if the main characters weren't LGBT or hinted at being so, etc., if everybody in this show was straight, would it still be a good show? And what I love so much about Our Flag Means Death is that this question literally does not apply. It is a pointless question because the queerness of the show is not a separate facet that can be taken away, kind of like a side of chips. It's part of the very fabric of the thing. It was made specifically with the representation of so many minority groups, including the LGBT community, in mind. And as such, the plot and the story and the relationships in the show wouldn't exist without it. You can't take the gay out of the show and have it still be the same thing. They can't be separated because it's intentional. It was so intentional and ah. Maybe I've just not watched enough TV, but I have never come across a show like this. I think somebody has said that uh, What We Do in the Shadows is quite good, so I should probably check that out, but I have never come across a show like this and given the reaction it appears to be getting online I think so many other people have also not come across a show like this in mainstream media. 
In fact, if you had told me a week ago that an expertly written, casual and relatively light-hearted idiots to lovers queer rom-com existed out there, I would not have believed you. Especially not if you added that it's in a historical fantasy. I don't know if you can call it fantasy since technically there are no magic elements in this show, but I'm calling it historical fantasy because it's kind of playing fast and loose with the actual facts. But a queer rom-com in that setting in fact, I still don't believe it sometimes. So much queer media is centered around the idea of coming out or how hard it is to be gay or different hardships that we've faced. And it's never just chill. It's so chill. And I just genuinely still don't believe it. I've binged this show twice now in the week and had time to do this, but I've become so obsessed. But I've been to the show twice now. And at the same time around, every time the characters were being adorable, I still find myself pleasantly surprised when the other characters acknowledged it or when I reminded myself that, wait a second, this is actually canon. It's not just me making it up. And all of this is without me even getting started on the supporting cast. I mean, Lucy and Black Pete completely blindsided me because weirdly enough, the last thing you expect in a gay rom-com, particularly anything that's got the main characters as gay, is for a second gay couple in the B-plot. That never happens. It's like, no, nope, we've got our token non-straight characters, let's move on. Nobody else needs to be not straight. It's completely fine. I didn't even see it coming because I just didn't expect it. Not to mention the way that Lucius teases both Ed and Steve repeatedly and the other characters and crew members point various things out. The way Izzy seems so utterly offended by the idea that he could clearly tell that Ed is in love with Steed and like he acknowledges it it's not him going oh I wonder why they're such close friends it's like god damn it my boss has gone and fallen in love with this twat what am I meant to do about it and the adorable awkward almost moments you get that you would get in a straight romance when you can clearly tell that they like each other and they're about to kiss or say something and then they change their minds and it's like oh yep yeah, let's just uh go back our days that totally did not happen and the way you can pinpoint the exact moment they fall in love versus the exact moment they realize they're in love and then there's jim who is quite honestly an amazing stabby legend and i just love them so much i love their relationship with oluwande and how it develops across the course of the show i love how there's literally only two brain cells in this entire series uh and olu gets one and izzy gets the other although sometimes he appears to lose it because he really does not think his uh master plans through a lot of the time um and everyone else just is kind of reveling in the chaos that is these two idiots being completely incompetent at just about everything i love the set design i especially love the costumes i definitely didn't do the complexity of blackbeard's outfit or steed's coat having rewatched it since i started this uh justice here and i will definitely need to try again sometime which means yes i am drawing these guys again yes i am gonna get around to drawing jim and other one day and probably frenchy as well because i just love him um also bonus points for the use of the song the chain in episode eight because i love that song and it fits so well and it very much had the uh the scene in Guardians of the Galaxy where everyone is just getting murdered but there's like a really upbeat song playing that whole scene just the chaos to the that song was so cool the little foot touch in the end of episode eight if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about the first time i saw that i had to rewind and i was like did that actually happen or was his leg just that far out to begin with and i was like oh my gosh that actually happened it's so cute i love this show so much because it is the first piece of queer media that i've come away from without feeling uncomfortable or shortchanged or confused I love this show because it was intentional. I know I use that word a lot. It was just so purposeful, everything they did. There was no changing in tone between different episodes as different writers either did or didn't lean into it. It was all on purpose and that's just so beautiful to me. You would not believe. And I do presume that if you are watching this, then you have probably already seen it. But if for whatever reason you haven't seen Our Flag Means Death, then I will never recommend anything more strongly than I am recommending you go watch this now. It's bloody fantastic. Stop watching this video. Stop doing whatever you're doing. Go watch it. If you've already seen it, go watch it again because honestly, it's so much better the second time round. It's bloody fantastic. And that is just about everything I have to say right now, I think. I will most certainly be coming back to this at a later date, talking about it more, drawing the characters more. 
I do apologize for running out of time to talk about the art. In summary, I'm still not sure making Ed's beard longer was the right call. And yes, I did go back and fix Steed's nose in post, but otherwise I'm pretty damn happy with it. There may very well be some more doodles gracing my Instagram sometime soon. There may very well be other posts coming. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a lovely day slash night slash afternoon. And I will see you all soon. Bye.